It's an age-old pursuit, a never-ending search, a quest that just won't quit. For that elusive, all too often fleeting feeling, happiness. And now more than ever, it seems Canadians are asking, really, truly wondering, are we happy? Canadians, generally speaking, are a sunny lot. Canada ranks among the top 10 happiest countries in the world. But there are large pockets of unhappy out there, most of them in big cities. Toronto, it turns out, is one of the least happy places in Canada. Hi. Oh, most people we approached were not that happy to talk happy at all. Time to talk to us about happiness? No, I'm sorry. Not at all? Yeah, no, Even sorry. while you do the windows? No. Do you have no. a few minutes to talk to us about happiness? No. <laughs> no? It's a nice subject. No, You're too busy to talk to us? Thank, Thank you. you. So much. All right. Now the ones that did stop to talk? What makes me happy? Grandchildren? Um, the smell of a good dinner? Blue skies, the sun, great people around. Makes you happy? Uh, when I sing love songs. Big cities, big dreams. You would think lots of people would be singing love songs. But it seems the more money we make, the more educated we are, the less happy we report to be. No surprise then, it's in urban centres where we find the most Canadians chasing the happiness rainbow. Okay, so my name is Mayda. My name is Alex. Thank you very much for coming to the meetup group tonight. I'm really happy you guys are here. Happy. Meetup groups like this one in Montreal are popping up across the country. These people are strangers but have one thing in common. They're all on the hunt, hungry for more happy. What would make me happier is, I call it chasing the magic. So chasing really moments that are intense joy. How do you think you could become even more happy? Do you think it's possible? Samantha Barley runs this group and a growing list of more. So what I'm seeing is that people are really looking for something. They're looking to be happier and there is a very big demand. We have waiting lists for our meetup groups. We have people who are just hoping that they can join. What is the secret to happiness? Have you figured that out? Um, I'm working on it, you say. We're, <laughs> I mean, we're learning some fascinating things, and what we're learning is there's, there's more than one secret. Um, if anyone can let us in on those there. secrets, it's Sean Aker, a Harvard researcher and best-selling author who's built an entire career studying the science of happiness. We first caught up with Sean in Montreal on a cold winter day. And the key to happiness? I think the key is realizing that, that uh, happiness is a choice. And it sounds trite, but when we researched it, it turns out it, it, it mattered a lot. Trite, but scientifically true. So you're training your brain to be happy? You're literally training your brain to be happier. Wow. Um, what's amazing is it, you learn it like a skill, right? Yeah. So just like somebody learns how to uh, do math problems in school yep. or learns how to swing a golf club. Mm -hmm. The same thing is true with how we learn optimism and gratitude and compassion. It's a practice skill. In other words, sure you can clap along if you're happy. And no doubt Pharrell Williams' hit song has inspired people across the country and around the world. But if you want that happy feeling to last once the song is over, we've got news for you. Happiness doesn't just drop from the sky. Name one thing that would make you happy. Probably buy a really good piece of jewelry. Chocolate. <laughs> yeah. Tempted to say money. Actually, many of us have it all wrong. Things may be the rewards of success, but things don't make you happy. Oftentimes we think, you know, work harder, be more successful, then be happier. But it turns out when you look at the research, it goes in the exact opposite order, that being successful doesn't actually create any of the levels of happiness we thought it would. Um, because every time you are successful, your brain changes the goalposts of what success looks like. Meaning it's not good enough anymore? Exactly. You get good grades in school, don't get excited, you need to get into a better school. You um, get into a good job, well, don't get excited, now you have to hit your targets for it, or you have to get a promotion. So the formula is backwards. What Sean discovered is a head-turner. He is in such demand, he travels nearly 300 days of the year, spreading the science behind his happiness revolution. The bottom line? You can rewire your brain to make yourself happy, all in a matter of weeks, by doing simple things like practicing gratitude and kindness, trying to love what you do, spending time with friends and family. 
Yes, the happiness equation can be that simple. But as Sean says, you gotta do it. And most of us don't. What we find is so often people scan the world for the threats, the hassles, the complaints first. Um, we never train people to do the exact opposite. We never train people at work or in schools to scan the world for the things that they're grateful for or to scan uh, life for what's meaningful. But when you don't practice something, that part of your brain literally atrophies. Sean's exercises are so simple. Write down three gratitudes every day, meditate for two minutes a day, and praise someone every day. The effects can be astounding. Within a period of 21 days, we can raise somebody's levels of optimism above what they've been testing for. And within a period of 28 to 30 days, we actually start to see changes in the neural pathways in their brain. Just looking for opportunities. And check on this right out. Side, the scan on the left is a brain on optimism. On the right, you see that big red dot? That's anxiety taking over. And that's your brain on pessimism. When somebody's in a positive state of mind, you get greater levels of arousal and activation in the parts of your brain that make good decisions, the parts of the brain that scan the world for opportunities. When you feel more negative, when you feel more stressed, it turns out your brain is, is fragmented. The happier you are, the smarter? The, in a simpler way, the happier you are, the more you can use your brain to solve problems. Not only does happiness make us smarter, listen to how it affects business. Productivity goes up 31% you're 40% more likely to get promoted, and sales shoot up 30%. With numbers like that, it's no wonder big business came running. Three, two, one, let's go! Kohl's, the American department store giant, has already made it a habit to pay it forward. Every year, there's this scene of frenzied positive energy. <laughs> a monumental act of kindness as managers put together 30,000 care packages for kids in hospitals all over the United States. It's a great feel-good exercise, but Coles wants to tap into the happiness advantage even more. Bevan Bayless runs the company's communications department. We have 140,000 associates who belong to Kohl's. Almost 130,000 of them are in the store. That means that every day they're interacting with our customers. And if they're not happy, and if they're not positive, and if they don't have what we in our culture call the yes attitude, we're never going to be able to achieve the financial results that we promised. Your levels of happiness improve, job effectiveness improves, and the people... And it's not just department stores like Kohl's that have brought Sean to Orlando this time. Fortune 500 businesses, the NFL, even the Pentagon are all embracing the world of positive psychology like never before. Partner up with someone that's sitting next to you. Please Every time, Sean time starts with a simple experiment. Two people looking at each other, one smiling, one not, <laughs> to see how long it takes for them to crack up. And stop. Point made, happiness is infectious, and that's a good thing. Hey, Monique, how are you? John Ferris caught that happiness bug. John is the CEO of pharmaceutical giant Sanofi's <laughs> Canadian office in Montreal, and he admits he was skeptical until he saw this. I love, uh -huh. love, love, love this happiness thing. Good, excellent. This is one of Sean's happiness workshops, a hands-on happiness seminar. A tough-as-nails numbers guy, this was never in any of John's business plans. Well, why were you skeptical? What was it about the word happy that made you think, hmm? I think when you're in a tough business environment and you're going through many challenges, suddenly to turn up one day and tell people they have to be happy is, is always a maybe a little bit of a challenge. If you turn that into a positive mindset and what that can make you deliver, it's a totally different way of looking at things. A different way of looking at things? No kidding. Especially when an orange frog is a central character. And in our group, orange is the new black. <laughs> the orange frog is the star of Sean's workshops. It's the simple tale of a dejected green frog that turns orange the more positive it gets. <laughs> Work is just part of your life and you should be happy like with your entire life. Honestly, this is the best thing that we've done at Sanofi in years. I feel like I'm gonna, I could do anything at this point. One day workshops with orange frogs and dance numbers are all well and good, but the CEO and John wants to find out how to keep the momentum going. And that's brought him here to Columbus, Ohio, home to one of the largest insurance firms in the United States. 
that also happens to be a global happiness leader. Right, so I'm giving you a tour, <laughs> allegedly. And, uh, you might Nationwide CEO Gary Baker has gone apparently bonkers over this happiness craze. Case in point, just take a look at this self-directed video. Check out this icing. It's buttercreamy. Yep, that's him in the front of the dance line singing about, yep, cake. This is all associate written, so, uh, you know, uh, thanking Nick for Monday morning coffee. We do. Baker gives several tours like this. Google has even signed up for one. The real credit, he tells John and everyone else, goes to his employees who have made happiness a work ethic. So that is negativity, feeling down, stamp on it catch and you're awesome. <laughs> Not only do they stamp out negativity, they've decorated cubicles and start every meeting with a gratitude. Okay, who wants to kick off recognition? Talk about paying off big time. Since people here took the Orange Frog workshop less than two years ago, sales are up a whopping 40%. Who's the best? Midwest! And guess who painted his office orange? It's been astonishing the effect that, that it's had on bringing the teams together. And uh, did I think it would drive uh, the production and engagement that it has? Probably not. But, you know, when you see a good thing, you want to double down on it. And uh, that's what we're doing. And uh, it seems to be paying off. Looking at you today, I'm sort of a bit uh, blown away. And John? Are you still a little skeptical of the whole idea? No, uh, I think I'm really starting to believe it and live it now. Um, and the feedback we've had from my internal team already, I think it's the strongest I've ever seen from, from a, 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 pro, a process or a training that we've even been through. So big business has seen the happiness light. But how about our happy seekers in Montreal? When we left them, we also left them a copy of Sean's book and asked them to try some of his happiness tips. Rather than struggle with a happiness formula, we challenged them to simply be kind and grateful for a couple of weeks. Did anything click? Are you guys happier? Yes. Yes. Sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. The first day was a, a big difference. It, like, my day was very different in my mind at night when I um, reflected on it. So it was like I would have forgotten some stuff. So it was nice to reflect on it and just see the positive in it. I started writing uh, emails to the mentors I've had in the past and, and I got amazing responses back from some of them. Like they had no idea the kind of change they made and that made me feel amazing too. Like they're feeling happy, I'm feeling happy. Whatever we attend to becomes our reality. Okay. So the more that we attend to the positives in our lives, we actually get better at doing that. Our brain gets better at seeing the things we're grateful for. You start seeing more meaning in your life and it makes it easier and easier to choose that happiness. Hi. Back in Toronto and to the happier souls who did stop to talk, now that the secret is out, they're even more hooked on sharing it. Put a little more effort into helping people to see the happiness that I see. Just try and make people smile. Because doing good, it comes back to you. And I think that's what happiness is all about. Score one for happiness. Maybe not heel clicking, jump for joy happiness. But maybe, just maybe, a tiny step in a positive direction. Joanna Rumeliotis, CBC News, Toronto.